Welcome to the television ministry of Souls Harbor Tabernacle. We are located in the shadow of beautiful Crowder's Mountain, 271 Camp Rotary Road, Gastonia, North Carolina. Now be blessed by the anointed ministry of Pastor James Chambers and Church. Well, praise the Lord. So good to be with you tonight. This is Pastor Chambers uh, on this Saturday night TV broadcast. We're so glad to be with you. Uh, this program was pre-recorded in the church and uh, have more people involved, and I'm sure you'll be blessed by the singing and the word that you will hear tonight. God bless you. As a prayer, I'd like to invite you to be with us at church in the morning. Our service times are 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock tomorrow, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and we'd be so glad to have you with us. Uh, Dallas Church uh, with Brother Eric Quinn, his wife Arlene, labored for the Lord there. Uh, all our churches have the same Sunday uh, times, 11 o'clock worship and 6 o'clock Sunday night. And all of us have 7 o'clock during the week. During the week, we just have a different day. Gastonia is Wednesday night, and uh, Brother Eric is uh, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, and then up in Mortisboro, we have Brother Chuck Poole and his wife Joyce. Great work going on there. And uh, they'd love to have you on Thursday night at 7 o'clock in all three churches, 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock on Sunday. Amen. And uh, we all believe in Sunday school. I mean, we really do, but uh, we've just been hindered from doing that. If you're looking on Facebook Live, you can see our page there, and uh, you'll see that in the in our newsletter that we give out at church every Sunday, we put down that, uh, you know, we're going to have to go with no Sunday school for a while, but I promise you, unless we are absolutely prohibited from doing it, we will be back doing Sunday school before long. Amen. Uh, uh, write to us if you would. Call that number on the screen and uh, write to us this week and be blessed this week. Have a good week. Meet us in church tomorrow if you can't be with us at Gastonia, Dallas, or Mooresboro. Get in a good Bible-based church where they preach the word and let God touch your heart and soul. And if there's some way, reason that you can't, we will be live streaming. Amen. We'd love to have you with us. I, I got some help tonight for the French family. We, they did the program on the TV a few weeks ago. We got some mail. Said you really enjoyed the French family. They just gonna sing and, and give me some scriptures and minister. Uh, Charlie and Tim and Abby and Lauren. And we're gonna let them uh, have the program tonight. Do have some announcements coming up. We'll be making them more. Got camp meeting with Brother uh, Charles Chandler from Wetumpka, Alabama. <laughs> Uh, October the 11th on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. It goes 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. We'd be glad to have you there. And we just appreciate you. God bless you as a prayer. We're not taking time that we can't take the prayer requests at the end. But if you text them in, call them in, Brother Donnie will be glad to get those on for you. And, uh, you know, uh, won't get them on the program, but he'll pray over them at the end. He'll pray with you on the phone. Whoever's by the phone will pray with you. And then, uh, uh, you know, we put them in a prayer box in my office at home under the altar, and they'll just stay there for a long time and stay before the Lord. God bless you tonight. We're going to turn it over to Brother Tim French, uh, minister, Reverend Tim French, and his two daughters, and then Charlie's going to be coming back around, and uh, they're going to finish out the program. God bless you as our prayer, and uh, enjoy the worship of the Lord. Brother Tim, have been Lauren come tonight. Thank you for turning in tonight and just watching the program. And we just want to encourage you that no matter what you're dealing with, what you're facing, you can always find the help that you need when you get into God's presence. And that's the place where we need to be. This particular song is called The Father's House, but I kind of also look at it as, you know, just if you get into God's presence, nothing that you're dealing with will, will move you, will shake you, will... Can, can do anything to you as long as you're in God's presence. You know, so it's kind of like if my girls needed something, um, all they had to do is just come to me, and I'll do what I can to give them whatever they need. And my father is so much more better, you know, than I am. You know, and, and he's able to give you and, and help you and, and minister to your needs. And, you know, but you got to come to him. You know, it's as part of the word is that you know that God promises or if and then promises that if you do this, then God will do this. If you come into God's presence, he will help you. If you seek after righteousness, then you will find it. You know, if you will knock, then the door will be open to you. It's just there's, there's several things that you, there's part of it that you have to do. But just, just worship the Lord with us with this song and hope you're blessed with it. Sometimes on 
this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Um, but what we found through the through that time is 
uh, we started staying home for church, and churches figured out how to stream online, and uh, people were listening to podcasts and tuning in to their churches on their websites. And um, I remember in that time, you know, we only thought it was going to be for a couple of weeks, and uh, it was a nice spring uh, Sunday mornings, and we would sit out on the deck and have coffee and watch TV and, you know, watch our, our preachers, my dad, on the screen on the uh, on Facebook. So, you know, for a couple of weeks, it was actually kind of nice because a lot of things that had been on our plates just kind of got wiped off our plates. And we were able to just relax. And, and for our family particularly, we had our, our, our schedules were so full. Um, I have two amazing daughters, and uh, they're both very athletic, and they love to play sports. And so when COVID-19 came, they were in soccer. And uh, at the time, my youngest daughter was still in middle school and my oldest daughter in high school. And so we were on two different soccer teams with two different soccer schedules. And uh, we, were, we were at practice or at a game every day, all day, after we got out of school. We were missing other things that were probably uh, more important for the soccer. Um, it's just where we found ourselves. I don't know where you were in mid-March when, when COVID-19 came to your house. Um, but what I found is through the, the past few months, as it's kind of um, amplified, and the numbers are getting bigger, and you know this politician has this to say, and that politician has that to say, and Friends will get in arguments about whether or not the mask works or doesn't work. Uh, and so many things that we've just had to deal with um, that are brand new that we, we really thought we weren't going to have to deal with. And, you know, not long ago I remembered something that I had read a long time ago that said there's nothing new under the sun. So COVID-19 is new to us, but it's not new. Um, the Lord, Jesus has known about this. You know, God's known about it since the foundations of the world. So COVID's not new. <clears throat> there's nothing new under the sun. But the thing that I found that it has really caused a lot of people is another C called complacency. And uh, so complacency, uh, there used to be a song by Crystal Lewis that said complacency is danger in its purest form. And um, because what complacency is, is it is unaware of self-satisfaction. And uh, so when we stopped going out to eat and we stopped going to church and we stopped going to school and some of us just got real comfortable and complacent in our homes. and um, so complacency happens um and you may be sitting there tonight and and i hope that i'm maybe not talking to anybody in this boat but i probably am uh, because in our church and in the churches that my little group southland re represents we've noticed that people have started coming back to church but not everybody started coming back to church because people still have a fear um of being in the church but yet those you know and we don't want to judge people but we see some of those same people maybe out at walmart and uh, we're like, wow, you know, they can go to Walmart, but they can't come to the church. And you don't want to judge people, but I, I think it's not really a judgment thing. It's just saying, calling it what it is. COVID has caused complacency, and people just have decided to stay home. So if you're listening to this on the TV tonight, it's a Saturday night. If your church is back in church and you haven't been in a while, I would ask you to check your heart and see if you are having self-satisfaction and being complacent as a result of COVID. Um, so... The, the next, you know, Tim just mentioned it just a minute ago. Um, he, he talked about hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And Matthew 5 and 6 says, um, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Um, my daughter Lauren and I read a, a scriptures at night, and we have different versions of the Bible. And we'll, you know, read all three of them just to see if we can get a better understanding of what it really means. And this other translation I have here in my hand is one that my granny used to read. Um, it helped her understand some scriptures. And uh, so Matthew 5 and 6 in this translation says, Those who want to do, do the right thing more than anything else are happy because God fully satisfies them. Um, and so in Psalm 100, it says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. This other translation says, Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with joy. Come before him with singing. Know that the Lord is God. He made us, and we belong to him, and we are his people, and that his sheep tend. So um, that the, uh, the King James says, Come before his presence with singing. So this song I'm going to sing, go ahead and start playing it for me, please. Um, this song I'm going to sing just talks about everywhere we've been and things where we, all the things that you go for. Don't be, you know, you've been out doing, don't be complacent. It's time to come before his presence with singing. In and out of situations. 
vibrations that turn up all at me. And all day long I struggle to find the answers that I need. us and not we ourselves 
We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and the truth of the Lord endures forever and ever. And my grandmother's version said, Come into the city with songs and thanksgiving to his courtyards with songs and praise. Thank him and praise him. The Lord is good. His love is forever, and his loyalty goes on and on and on. And so we're talking about those three C's. We have COVID that has caused complacency. And what I would hope is that hearing that song tonight, I didn't sing it the best because I sang a lot this morning. I sung out actually a little bit hoarse from the earlier singing today. But I hope that just hearing those words, COVID and complacency, might have brought just a little bit of the next, the last C, conviction. Because conviction will put your, make your heart want to get back to a place where God is. You know, complacency, it's dangerous. It's so dangerous because you don't even know that you're complacent. You're just satisfied. Um, but when you have a, a strong conviction, you know, hold on. Oh, I want to talk about that hunger and thirst after righteousness right quick because, you know, I was thinking about uh, my dad has been trying to lower his sodium. Uh, and everyone should do that. But I got to trying to tell my mom which water was best because I was trying to help her lower my dad's sodium. And, um, you know, just a little side lesson here. I'm a teacher by trade. I can't help it. But if you have purified water, it's got salt and chlorine and other chemicals in it that cause you actually to be more thirsty. But if you just get that straight spring water, there's nothing in it except water, and it'll quench your thirst. Um, and so when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, if you try to get some other kind of something, maybe you're just stuck watching YouTube on Sunday or stuck watching the, um, the Facebook, but there's nothing like being in the presence of God. So I hope that you will get a hunger. You know, don't quit trying to feel it with the other additives and just get on back to church. Conviction is a strong persuasion or a belief that something is missing and that you've got to get through. In the religious realm, it includes not, you know, like, um, like having, like feeling like you need to be engaged in something, like to do something, um, to fix something. And in the world is to prove somebody is guilty, but the Holy Spirit who convicts, um, he'll take the word and he'll drive that sin out of you through conviction and he'll drive you to a place back to the feet of Jesus. And that's what I just wanted to end on tonight is that we need to get, you know, COVID made us complacent. I hope that we can let conviction take us back to the fourth C I'm going to add here tonight, back to church. You know, if you've got, a, if you're blessed with someone who's, you know, a pastor who's opening the church doors for you tomorrow, you know, you should not take it lightly that you still have that religious freedom to get up in the morning and go to church. I feel like, you know, so many things are lining up that the enemy is fighting, 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 and the freedom that we enjoy in America could be taken just like that. I think how quickly we all conform to wearing masks and staying home and, you know, all the things that we just did just like that, and how easy it would be for them to say, okay, then we're just not going to go back to church, and, we're just, and you wouldn't even know it had been taken. You could, you could like, like say, well, it's not that the Spirit of the Lord had departed from us. We didn't even know that it left. Things happen so quickly and we just did it out of fear but you know i'm going to be immune to fear because he didn't give me a spirit of fear he gave me a, a spirit of power a spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind um so i just want uh tim and the girls to sing that chorus one more time for you before we check out of here tonight and tim will um it will pray uh as we leave but i just want you to think about that covid brought complacency maybe the word and desire to be in his presence will be, bring conviction and tomorrow morning, if you are able and have the ability, I would love for you to get up and go to church. And when you get there, this song says, lay your burdens down. It says, check your shame at the door. Just like if you were at the airport and you check your bags at the door, you can't really take them with you. you got to check them at the door. This song says, check your shame at the door. You don't have to be ashamed in the morning. Say, I haven't been to church since March. Who, March. Who cares? Who cares? God just wants you to come back to his presence. And his word says to don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, even more so as you see the day of the Lord approaching. And if I, I'll tell you, if there's ever been a time when I could personally see the day of the Lord, the coming of Jesus Christ approaching, it's now. So please don't get complacent. Please get up in the morning and get back to the presence, the house of God where people are, where you can be encouraged and you can be filled and you can be in the presence of Jehovah.
those needs, God, whether they be physical needs, God, whether they're financial needs, God, whether they're emotional needs, God, whatever they might be, God, we know that you are able to take care of them, God. If there's somebody, God, out there tonight, Lord, that needs just a touch from you, God, because they feel like they've gone too far, God, they're not where they need to be with you, and that they, the enemy's been telling them that they can't come back to you, God, tonight. Lord, the, the, the words of this song, God, will just ring in their heart, God, and let them know that, God, they can come back and find you, and come and reach out to you, and know that you are there with them, Lord. on the telecast. Pastor Chambers, wife Betty, and the entire congregation welcome you to any of our exciting services. Sunday school, 9.45 a.m. Morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening, 6 p.m. and Wednesday at 7. Tune in next time.